for me. Uh, the Bible says, those who seek me in the morning, they will find me. As we have come together this morning to gather, we will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I think of glory. We thank you for the moment, for a moment like this. We thank you for bringing us together to eat manna from heaven because you are the manna from heaven. We thank you, Lord, for sharing yourself and giving yourself to us. And we pray that as we begin to eat this manna, we pray that the Lord God, you will fill us in the name of Jesus. You will quicken our spirit and let us begin to live as in Christ. We want to live this way life, which is life in Christ. I want to live our bio life, which is the life, ordinary life. Father, elevate us to your Zoe life in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. At the end of it all, Lord, let us return all glory unto you. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have prayed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good morning once again. And uh, what we'll be looking at this morning is found in the book, in the epistle of Paul to the Romans, chapter 8. And we'll, we'll be looking from verse 1 through to verse 12. And we'll be talking about the same spirit that raised Christ. Our golden verse is found in that, uh, that chapter, verse 11, that says, and if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, and he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore to your life mortal, that is short-lived, perishable bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Before we go on, I'm going to read that Romans chapter, chapter 8, but we know what it contains and begin to discuss it as quickly as possible. Um, it goes thus, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life is Christ in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sin flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the, the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. For they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Verse 8, so then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are in the, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that is Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, but to live. Not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. That is the word of God. May the Lord bless his word. Now, we want to begin to discuss um, what is contained in uh, that Bible passage, and we want to look at verse 1 in particular, and if we look at that verse 1, if we discuss verse 1, we will discuss it for a full day, because it contains a lot that can change us, that can change our lives, and make us worthy of the use of the master. Um, it says, there is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, condemnation means when one is judged and when one is judged uh, uh, and, uh, negatively. Judged negatively means that one is condemned totally. And condemnation brings about death or punishment. Now, Jesus Christ, uh, the, Paul is telling the Romans and telling I in Christ, there is no 
condemnation. Now, before Christ died, because that is death, is what brought the no condemnation, uh, uh, no condemnation uh, judgment to us, that we are no longer under condemnation. Now, what brought it to us is the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we look at St. John chapter 3, verse 18, it says that uh, uh, he who believes in the Son is not condemned, but he who does not believe in the Son is condemned already. Now, condemnation already means that you're not having Christ in your life, means that you're already dead. You are condemned, and condemnation is condemnation to death, condemnation to uh, eternal uh, 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 to uh, eternity in hell. Condemnation means that one is not in Christ. But condemnation means that one is not going to the kingdom of God. Condemnation means that one is condemned to perfidy. So the implication of that is that when one is not in Christ, one is condemned already. And I pray that we will not be under condemnation in the name of Jesus. Before Christ uh, uh, during his life ministry, we read the story of a woman in St. John chapter 18 that was brought to him, uh, condemned already by people. She was already condemned because they caught her in adultery in St. John chapter 18, uh, chapter 8. She was caught in adultery and they brought her to Jesus. And Jesus said, He who has no sin should cast the first stone. The law of Moses says that. Anyone caught in adultery should be stoned to death and should be stoned to death publicly. That was why everybody, all people were running after her in order to stone her. But they wanted to see what they would uh, use to catch Jesus. And they brought her to Jesus. And Jesus said, he who has no sin should cast the first stone. And uh, because all of them could not face uh, no condemnation, they all have to uh, drop their stones one after the other and they left. And in verse 11, uh, in verse uh, uh, 10, Jesus Christ asked, where are those that condemned you? And she said in verse uh, 11, that no one has condemned her. And the Lord Jesus said, go, I too do not condemn you. That means that Jesus Christ, even during his uh, earthly ministry, had already started to pronounce the no guilty that while we are in him, we have no condemnation. Now, in uh, first Corinthians, second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11, we all know that passage that says that he who is in Christ is a new creature. All things have passed away. Those old things that have passed away include, include all our sins that Jesus. Christ has a resurrection, has remitted our sins. And through his death and resurrection, we are no more guilty of sin. So if there is any one of us that is still under a self-condemnation, I will call this self-condemnation because many of us, we judge ourselves, we look at our past and we look at what we have done in the past and we begin to judge ourselves. And we begin to judge ourselves to say, oh, I, it may be my, uh, what I have done in the past is what is causing me problems now. The, the Jesus wants me to let you know that today that you are no more under condemnation. All you need to do is to surrender yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. Submit yourself to him. Make him your Lord and your master. And leave everything to him. To believe and to have Christ in your life is a very simple task. Very simple in the sense that all you need to do is to confess Jesus with your mouth that he's the Lord and believe in your heart that he, is, uh, he, that he died and resurrected, that he was raised from the dead, and you'll be saved. That is all you require. And you'll know that every Sunday when we recite our creed, but part of the creed says, I believe in Jesus Christ uh, who uh, was condemned, uh, who was um, um, uh, condemned uh, by Pontius Pilate. He died. It was crucified, and the third day he rose from the dead. Now, that confession that Jesus Christ is Lord and that the third day he rose from the dead is enough for us to uh, not to be condemned. It's enough for us to pass a no guilty judgment on us. So everyone that 
have seen that when that creed is being read on Sunday, it's not a time for meeting. It's not a time for us to be gisting. It's not a time for us to be looking at our phones. It's not a time for us to be uh, talking to another person. It's not a time for distraction. It's a time when we should devote ourselves to what we are reading because that is our salvation. That is the basis of our salvation. You, you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord. You, you believe in your heart that he, he rose up from the dead on the third day and is seated on the right hand of God Almighty. That is what our, our creed is, our profession is based on. And when we confess that, we are every day renewing our submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are renewing our salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, people will say salvation, once you are saved, you are saved. No, once you are saved, it's a continuous exercise to remain saved. That's why the Bible says you must walk your salvation with trepidation. So we must continually believe and walk on our salvation. So we, we, we must understand. Let me quickly give us a, another example. This one might not be found in the scriptures, but when, we, when you read why, you read a lot of things about the Lord Jesus Christ. When he was, uh, the Bible did not record his life in during the infancy. Uh, Herod wanted to kill him, and it was uh, the, the parent, the earthly parents were asked to take him to Egypt. But by the time he was coming back from Egypt, he was three years old. And there is uh, a book that I read. They call it the Lost Books of the Bible. I don't know if anybody will have read it. It talks more about the infancy of Jesus. When Jesus Christ was coming back, that was when he met those robbers that were, from, that were nailed to the cross with him. And uh, they were highway robbers and they robbed everyone that passes through that, that highway. But when Jesus Christ was coming uh, with his parents, we were told that in that book that the two robbers wanted to rob them. But one of them said, no, don't let us rob them because of that infant, because of that baby. Let's leave them because they were coming back with a lot of gifts that were given to them when they were in Egypt. So the, 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 the other one said, no, we must rob them. Why? What is special about them? But when Christ was moving nearer with his parents, they, they were made to hear sounds of chariots and horses, and they had to flee to go and hide because the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings is the one passing. And in the Bible already recorded it that you should do my prophets no harm and uh, uh, do, not, uh, do not judge my, 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 my priest. So uh, uh, they, they had to run. And Jesus Christ, when they were passing, met the one that said they should not be robbed and said, in, in 30 years, be with me in paradise. That is what came to pass that when it was a year's breath for him to be condemned, he received mercy. He was not condemned. He said, Jesus, remember me in your kingdom. And Jesus replied that today you shall meet me, in, you shall be with me in paradise. So that means that no matter the gravity of your sin, no matter what life you have lived before, do not condemn yourself. All you need to do is to surrender, and submit it at the, at, the, at the feet of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. And when you do that, you will find that you, you will live a, a life that I call a Zoe life. Zoe life means life in the spirit. The, the opposite of it by your life. By your life is, is ordinary life. And when you yield your life to Christ, you become, then we add a super, to your natural, to become a supernatural person, will add extra to your ordinary life to make you live an extraordinary life. What do I mean? We, we all know uh, in the Bible that when God called Moses and when he was discussing with Pharaoh and all his uh, 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 idol worshippers, the Lord told, uh, told Moses to drop his rod. Dropping that rod means yielding the rod to Christ yielding the Lord, the Lord to God. That Lord was ordinary Lord, the shepherd's Lord. But the, the rod and the rod of Moses that had turned to his serpent swallowed the other to show the superiority of God. And the Lord said to Moses to hold the rod by the tail. Naturally, the, the, the serpent should be held by the head. But the Lord said he should hold it by the tail. 
And when he held it by the tail, this, the, 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 the rod turned to, uh, to rod again. And it is that same rod now that became a supernatural rod that parted the Red Seas, that did uh, miracles and brought, brought water from the rock. It was an ordinary rod, but because it was yielded to Christ, so we all need to yield our lives to Christ. When we yield our lives to Christ, when we submit to him, when we live the life we are supposed to live, we, uh, according to the dictates of the Lord, we begin to live a Zoe life. That is life in the Christ. And we live life in the Holy Spirit. When we live life in the Spirit, there will be no condemnation for us. When we live life in the Holy Spirit, we live a fulfilling life. Our life will have meaning. We will not live. There is difference between living and existing. People, so, so many people are just existing. They are not living because they are not living quality life. But when you surrender yourself to Christ, a life in the Holy Spirit, life that is full of joy, life that is filled with the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, when you live such life, you will not have time for the things of the flesh. When you live the life of the Holy Spirit, you, Jesus Christ becomes your father. I listened to uh, Mommy Titi yesterday when she was doing this devotion and said that when you surrender your life to Christ, Jesus Christ becomes your father. When Jesus Christ becomes your father, your earthly father comes just a figure for you. Because when you submit yourself to him and he becomes your father, I want to tell you that your DNA will change. You will now have the DNA of Jesus in you. And when you have the DNA of Jesus in you, sickness will have no place in your body system. Your, your, your life will be given a meaning. There will be when Jesus Christ said, there is chapter 22. What he's talking about is that when you live in me, you are free from every form of causes, generational cause, cause, whichever form of causes, you are free from them. And that's why he said, there shall be no more cause. And I say to you this morning that as you as you submit yourself as you surrender yourself as you yield your life to him your life will have meaning in the name of jesus you will begin to live life in the holy spirit in the name of jesus and you will live under no condemnation again and so that brings us to uh the the golden verse for today which is in, in romans chapter 8 and verse 11 which says that uh let me take it from verse 10. Then it says, and if Christ, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. That means Jesus Christ is in you. That is when you have taken him in. Taking him in is accepting him as your Lord and master yielding your life to him and living to living to according to his dictates. That is when the every sinful nature in you will be dead. That's why Paul told uh, the, the Colossians in chapter three, verse five, he said, mortify therefore your members that is in the world. That is, mortify means to kill. Mortify means to, 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 to murder, to, to erase completely our natural being that is the sinful nature in us and he listed those sinful natures so when we mortify what take on and that is when we begin to live the lead the life that uh, is contained in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 to 23 that is the the fruit of the spirit the fruit of spirit of the spirit will give you uh will give you a, a spiritual maturity those of us who are spiritually gifted, I always tell my people that spiritual maturity is not the same thing as uh, 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 spiritual maturity. I mean, um, what do I call it now? Uh, that you have gifts does not mean that you are spiritually grown. Spiritual maturity is, I mean, uh, it's not the same. As, uh, as being having the, uh, the gift of the spirit. The gift of, of the spirit does not tantamount to spiritual maturity. You might be endowed with so many gifts, but if you are not, not spiritually mature, pastors, prophets, sleeping with other women, lying and uh, condemning people, and you know all that kind of thing, even keeping malice because they are not spiritually matured. Spiritual maturity are the contents of the fruit of the spirit. 
which is contained in Galatia chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. So when we when we exhibit uh, uh, this, the, this, the fruit of the spirit, then it means that Christ is living in us. When Christ is living in us, sin will have no place because we will not live our life on our own. It is the spirit in us that will continue to live. Paul also told uh, the Corinthians in, in, the, second, in the second letter, uh, chapter 10, from verse 4 to 5. He said, even where we are battle, he said that our spiritual warfare weapon is not can up, but it's powerful in the Lord to the pull it down of strongholds. And he said that we sub, we, we pull down uh, our thoughts and we subordinate it to Christ. So every thought that comes out of us when we are in Christ, when Christ is in us, it, it is subordinated to Christ. So you will not have your own thought. Let me also talk about the body. The body is not necessarily this case that we are carrying about. Our body and our spirit and our soul, the, the, our, the spirit and the soul are the, the contents of this body that we carry. Our soul is the, is the seat of our emotion, is the seat of our thoughts, is the seat of our, uh, of our, think, of our uh, willpower and all that. So you have the willpower in you, but when Christ is in you, that your will will be subordinated to Christ, that your thought will be subordinated to Christ. That's when Christ Christ is living in you. And when you have a place in you, it, in fact, your, 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 your nature, which is spiritual nature now, will abhor anything that is sinful. And that's why he said, when uh, Christ is in you, you, the body is dead because you are, you are now of the spirit. And he said, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. So the, the spirit of God dwells in you. And he told us in, a, a, I think in First Corinthians, that you are, the, you are the carrier of the Holy Spirit that lives in you. So when you are a carrier of the Holy Spirit that lives in you, it is the Holy Spirit that will, that will now control your life. And when the Holy Spirit controls your life, your body, including your soul and your spirit, will now be quickened. Quickening means to be, to be made alive. That means sickness will have no place in your body system because the Holy Spirit that dwells in you, the Holy Spirit becomes the, the, the landlord of your body. So any other thing becomes the tenant. That's why he said, because the, the, the body is now the, the, the uh, is now the place, the dwelling place of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So I pray for you this morning that as we are closing, that allow Jesus Christ to flow into you. When Jesus Christ lives in you, Jesus Christ is kingdom of God personified. And uh, Luke chapter uh, 17, I think verse 21, says that as for the kingdom of God, you do not need to look for it here or there because the, the kingdom of God lives in you. And I want to let you know that if the kingdom of God lives in you, it means that the king himself lives in you. So that means that as long as you allow Christ to live in you, you are a carrier of God's presence. And when you are a carrier of God's presence, you have rest. The, Paul, um, Moses had an, uh, a discussion with the Lord in Exodus chapter 33. And he said, you have told me to carry these people, but you have not shown me who will go with us. And he said, if you don't go with us, we will not go from here. And the Lord said, I will go with you and give you rest. Going with them is giving them his presence. And Jesus Christ, when he was sending us into the world, in Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 28, he said, uh, verse, from verse 19, he said, the, the, uh, he, he, he said, power in heaven and in earth has been given unto me. Power on earth and, and in heaven has been given unto me. Go therefore. And at the end of it, he said, I will be with you to the uttermost part of, the, of life. So if the Lord said he's going to be with us, that means we are going to be carrier of his presence. And I pray for you this morning, as you are listening to this, that you'll be a carrier of, of the kingdom of God, a carrier of the Holy Spirit, a carrier of the Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you go in the name of Jesus. And as you go this morning, I prophesy into your life 
that doors of opportunities, because you are now a carrier of the Lord Jesus Christ, will begin to open unto you in the name of Jesus. Wherever you turn to, favor and mercy of God will find you in Jesus Christ's mighty name. And I pray that the indwelling spirit will go with you throughout the journey of your life in Jesus Christ's mighty name. I bless the name of the Lord concerning you. And I pray that at the turn by tomorrow when we shall be gathering, as many as are present on this platform, we will have, including myself, we all have testimonies to share in the name of Jesus. I want to pray that this program, as it continues, will continually be a blessing unto, unto, unto generations even yet unborn in the name of Jesus. And I pray for the church of God that will continue to work strong mm -hmm. that all, all of us that are members of the church, members of the body of Christ worldwide, will have will all be beneficial of the presence of God. And at the end of it all, we shall not go into condemnation and damnation because the Lord Jesus Christ will be our advocate in the name of Jesus. I bless God and I want to thank you all for listening. Join us tomorrow again at the same time by 9.30, by 9 o'clock to 9.30. Uh, those who seek me early in the morning, they shall find me. You will find God today in the name of Jesus. Thank yeah. you and God bless you.